bonjour à tous. C'est un plaisir de pouvoir être ici aujourd'hui et bien aussi. Ça, c'est mon français pour aujourd'hui. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I work with the National Research Council, uh, which is, for those of you who are from outside the country, it's our national federal government national research agency. I sometimes tell people it's a lot like being in a university, but without the students. <laughs> There's an element of truth to that, but we also work for the government, so, um, you know, six one half dozen on the other. Um, I'm frankly quite surprised that I've worked with the government for this long. Through three prime ministers now, two different parties, I thought they would have gotten rid of me long ago. Um, my expertise is in the field of online learning, uh, sometimes called e-learning. Uh, I've been in the field for a very long time. My background originally is in philosophy, surprising I know. Um, and uh, when I was working uh, toward a PhD, my dissertation was called The Network Phenomenon, Empiricism, and the New Connectionism. And that was back in the 1980s, and that was one of the first waves of AI hype. Actually, it wasn't the first wave, it was about the third wave of AI hype that Chris Eby was just talking about. So yeah, I, I've seen the hype, too, with respect to AI, and also with respect to learning technologies. I've been part of those waves of hype sometimes. Uh, I don't apologize for that. Um, it may be true that artificial intelligence is not going to teach us, but I think that it is also true that in time we will learn how to teach each other. And that will be a significant advance over the system that we have now where a small and very privileged group of people, collectively known as professors, get to do all the teaching. The rest of us, well, learn whatever they teach us. I think the, the core question being brought about by AI isn't, again, it isn't whether the machine will replace us. It isn't even how will we work complementary with machines. Uh, you know, I, I read a lot of science fiction too, and I think probably the boring answer is most the most likely scenario, um, except maybe not the collective part, that's the part where we're not so good at. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, people pivot as you know, humans versus AI. I think that's kind of a silly thing to do, but about humans and AI working as a single unit. Um, so I've been thinking about that, and the big challenge that all of this presents to us is actually a social challenge, not a technological challenge, because it creates more and more, and in an accelerating fashion, a world of haves and have-nots, the elite and the non-elite. And our fundamental question is how we're going to deal with that. Uh, it's a fundamental question because as society gets more complex, something that was also talked about, it becomes increasingly more difficult to govern and impossible for small groups of people uh, or individuals to govern. The only way to govern ourselves is as a society, which means that we have to move from a society that is based on identity or nationalism or religion or language to a society that is based on something like consensus the commonality of a decision-making process. Can we do that? Does artificial intelligence, as currently understood, offer us lessons in how to do that? Is the way a human brain works and a machine brain works the way a society can work? I think these are key questions. One of the real things that uh, I've been able to do in my position, I've been very lucky, incredibly lucky, is I've been able to travel to countries around the world and talk to people that people like me don't normally get to talk to. Um, and I was recently in Colombia talking to people who had survived the war there and were victims of the war. 
that are describing their experience. Because here we have a situation where you have this raging kind of inequality, the wars, the worst kind of inequality. And what they described was what they had lost. And what they had lost was, first of all, security. But that's only where it began. Then they lost their identity. It was a sealant into the war effort. Then they lost their voice. Because after all, lose the ships, sink the ships. And finally, they lost their opportunity. There was no hope, there was no future. And that's the story of people in war-torn areas. And increasingly, that's the story of people in a society that becomes less and less egalitarian. So the question I have is, can we solve that with our understanding of artificial intelligence, with our understanding of intelligence generally? Thank you, and I really look forward to talking to you.